You don't need Netflix, you don't need cable. Hop on YouTube, welcome to the hood table. Where we chop up local and global events vocally. You don't really wanna miss out on these conversations. Just joke a little, huh? Laugh a little, get that wine in your system for your glass a little. Expose current events, talk trash a little. You never know these opinions might clash a little. They addicted to the content, got them binge watching. You don't like it, then you want invited. Bet your friends watching in the house and your job parking lot before you clock in. They don't wanna miss a second of this HD content. Everybody think they got something to say, so it's an open invitation. Bring it to the table, but if you come whack, just know we ain't buying in. We gon' probably turn you back until you start trying again. Huh? Yeah, welcome to the hood table. You don't need Netflix, you don't need cable. Yeah, welcome to the hood table. You don't need Netflix, you don't need cable. Mm-hmm. 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 Hey, welcome to the Hood Table one more again. Come on in, everybody. Make sure you hit the like button, share button, and subscribe to the Hood Table if you're not already subscribed. And don't forget to follow us on IG, Facebook, and Twitter. And, of course, our thehoodtable.com website where you can find many of my blogs. Um, you can find links to purchase our uh, Hood Table merchandise from T-shirts to leggings to coffee cups, all kind of stuff. And also you can sign up for our monthly newsletters, which I send out once a month at the beginning of the month. So um, also, if you come in after the live, please do the same, like, share, and subscribe, and all the above. <laughs> but yes, today we are going to discuss power. Um, and I need y'all to let me know how y'all feel about this spinoff so far of Power Book 2 Ghost. We are now on season one, episode three, and it's titled Play the Game. And if you really paid attention to the episode, you will see exactly what they meant by the title of play the game uh several people this episode was playing the game playing a part <laughs> but yes yeah, so let me know what you thought about it hey edward mcafee hey what's going on i don't know if you watched power or not this last episode but i'm getting like some negative feedbacks from like friends of mine who have been watching this season and I guess they feel like the season is moving really slow. Um, if you've been watching it, let me know how you feel. Anybody can chime in, hit the comment, um, uh, hit the uh the uh comment section in the chat, or if you want, always feel free to jump on the stream yard. And matter of fact, let me drop the link, drop the link, drop the link. Hold on, y'all, hold on. Okay, all right. Okay, there's the link to the stream yard if you want to jump on the stream and discuss power with me on the screen. But I'll have to admit the first episode was just off the chain. It was so fast. It was like I just knew like just from that first episode, I just expected uh, me, myself personally, a lot more action each episode. But I don't know. I don't know what they're trying to do with this uh, new spinoff on Stars, but it is moving kind of fat, my kind of slow. But anyway, anyway, this episode um, focused a lot on Tasha and focused a little more on um, on uh, Monet's husband, Tahada. I hope I'm saying that right, but. This episode with uh, Tasha, Tasha. Now, her lawyer, McLean, um, McLean, investigator, Matarazzo, they are still upset with Tasha because everybody knows Tasha is still lying through her teeth. Everything Tasha says is a blatant lie, and they know it. You said, go say really did. It was all set up. Don't tell me that. <laughs> Don't tell me that because then I'm going to believe it because I already kind of believe it, but then I'm going to really believe it. So I'm going to, I'm not going to get my hopes up. I'm not going to get my hopes up. At the beginning, I thought that maybe it was a setup that he was shot, but somebody took him somewhere and stitched him all up, gave him a little rubber tussle, and he's somewhere healing up. <laughs> but I don't know. I don't know. That would be nice though, because I don't know. I don't know. We, we just got to see. We just got to see. But um, 
Yeah, they're still friends with her because she's still um they're still under the impression that she knows exactly who killed Ghost. Um, and they don't believe that it was Tommy. And despite Sack setting her up to make it look like she did kill Ghost and Tommy, Tasha still insists that she's innocent. She's ready to take the stand. They knew good and darn well. Tasha isn't ready to take the stand. But McLean was like, okay, she thinks she's really ready to take this stand. We gonna put her ass up on the stand. <laughs> She didn't even see it coming. She did not see it coming. But um, what do y'all think about that? Uh, the scene. Okay, I'm I'm not quite sure what Tasha wants, needs, or is trying to find out about Marshall Meredith. Y'all y'all clue me in because I haven't figured this out. So if y'all know, clue me in. But when and she slipped that in her fellow inmates the morning after pill. I can't recall the inmate's name. I don't even know if they said her name. But um, she slipped her the morning after pill. And she still feels like she needs a friend. She needs to get the details, the 411 on Marshall. Um, she also needs to get some information on the person who uh, potentially may have knocked up the inmate for her to need the morning after peel but i'm still kind of lost on what she needs from marshall you said he knew people was after him and the reason tasha know is because she helped go fake his death oh wow that sounds like a good theory that really sounds like a good theory it really does it really does um but the scene when the inmate was sitting at the table with Tasha and she was telling her, what you need a friend for? You only going to be in here for a minute. You know, nobody stays here past their trial. So what do you need a friend for? But before Tasha could even explain to her what she really needs, then uh, Marshall, she kind of looks over, trying to be a little nosy. And then the guy who uh, Tahada has spying on tasha he kind of distracts marshall and uh tries to find out she needs anything else done so we don't quite yet know what exactly tasha needs from that inmate but she was able to manage to slip her that pill and she was also able to um get them to give her a, a cell phone which of course was on monet and most likely her husband, because he has big clout in the prison, running stuff in the prison, running stuff on the streets. <laughs> and I think I like him. I think I like him. I might end up liking him more than I like Mary J. Bly's character, Monet, because Monet seems ruthless. Like, they trying to make Tasha out to be the queen pen, when all along, top. Monet, she is like a crime boss. She is running stuff on the street, and she's lethal. I wouldn't want to cross her ever. But anyway, anyway, Tasha, back to Tasha. Um, as far as standing trial, she believes that she's able to stand trial. So they snatch her away from jail, drag her to the courthouse. They put her in makeup, hair, put her in a nice old suit and everything, making her really presentable to look, you know, innocent in front of the jury now day one she did okay she was she was pretty convincing she was even quite composed i thought especially when she had to say that she was involved in ghost and tommy's drug empire but she kept lying she still was lying saying she had tommy kill silver which we know was a lie now she did tell the truth about opening up some bank accounts laundering money for ghosts but she lied again when she said she was forced to do so Lie after lie after lie. Now, day one, she thought she had it all under control. She felt she pulled it off that, you know, when she does have to stand trial in front of sex, she, you know, felt deeply that she wouldn't have no problems doing that. Um, Day two, though. <laughs> Day two of the mock trial, Tasha was grilled by one of the best attorneys, Tamika Robinson, who was supposed to be representing Tasha, but you know what happened there. Um, she was in no way prepared to face Robinson in a cross-examination. Robinson, always on top of her game, she broke Tasha all the way down, proving to the jury that she was indeed a queen pin. The first day, Tasha thought she had it in the bag. The second day, all 12 jurors, including the women, and that was at uh, Tasha's request. She said, please get some mothers, get some single mothers on there. All of them, including the women, all feel like Tasha was guilty of all charges. So 
Tasha, after seeing that happen, she kind of broke down. She was crying. I didn't kill ghosts. I didn't kill ghosts. I'm innocent. Woof, 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 woof. Do y'all think she will ever confess? Ever confess? Of course not. Because then Tyreek, she had to throw her son under the jail. And that's the whole reason why she's in jail, because she doesn't want her son to get arrested. Um, as far as Tyreek, Tyreek, he sees it like this. If mom is going to do the time for his crime, he has to make sure that all her attorney fees is paid up. He has to make sure that he stays in school like she wants. So he has to keep on tutoring Zeke. Tariq has a lot of things on his shoulders right now to be such a young boy, but he, he's trying to manage. He's trying to manage. You said then the boy that shot him was in on the tube. And if you notice the gun went off as soon as the killer showed up laughing out. So as he heard the shot, he ran thinking ghost was dead and that blood was fake too. I don't know. We shall see. <laughs> we shall see. Now, as far as um, Tariq, Tariq, thanks to Diana, thanks to uh, Monet, Thanks for Tahada. I know I'm saying that man's right. Is it Tahada? I know J's is pronounced, you know, in Spanish or Mexican, you know, um, as uh, Tahada. I think his name was Tahada. <laughs> but anyway, that's their last name, Tahada. But anyway, Tariq, you know, being grateful that Diana hooked him up, you know, gave his mother the phone, gave his mother the morning after pill to pass on to his cellmate. He texts Diana, you know, his gratitude and wants to meet up with her. But her mom, Monet, she done made it very clear to Diana. She done made it very clear to Cain. I was about to say Cain and Abel. To Cain and Drew. <laughs> they kind of remind me of Cain and Abel. Though. They got, it's like Cain, of course, is the, 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 well, okay, Drew is the lesser of two evils. Cain, He's more the body, the body, ride, the ride, shoot you, your, you know, blow your brains out. Drew, he's like, okay, let's talk it over. Let's try to figure it out. You know, and then if it don't work so well, and then I call in, you know, my backup, you know, the bulldog, which is Kane, his brother. But anyway, anyway, Tariq, he had no idea that after Tasha got the phone and she got the pills that Tahada Diana's father had Bishop spying on her. And he found out that the pill was not necessarily for Tasha. They were under the impression that she might be pregnant, but then they were thinking, did she sleep with a CO? I mean, the girl just got there. Just got there. So you, I would think that they would have thought it was somebody else, but they haven't figured out who the pill is for. And if they did, Bishop didn't say anything. Or he didn't see it. He did take pictures. Y'all saw him take pictures of Tasha. She was sitting at that table, but maybe he didn't quite see her slip that um her fellow inmate that pill. But anyway, anyway, Tahada, he is now spying on Tariq. Like Tariq was looking up information on him the last episodes. Now Tahada got his eyes on Tariq. Um Monet. Monet. Who she's so ruthless, man. I don't know why anybody wants to cross her. When she found out that Lil Wap, where they get these names from for these gangsters, Lil Wap, <laughs> and I'm not even going to tell y'all what, what came to my mind when I saw Wap. Y'all already know that, that, <laughs> that song by Cardi B. <laughs> <laughs> you said laugh out how key, low key ghosts know how to move to stay relevant and untouchable, plus keep his business running. Tasha is playing her roles, that's all, and watch is all going to unfold at the two. You might be right. You might be right. We shall see. But Monet, she um basically she got upset because Little Wop and the GTG crew. Um, after seeing them live on social media, thanks to Diana, and y'all notice how Drew was like kind of upset with Diana because I think he doesn't really uh, believe in some of the actions that they have to take or some of the repercussions that people have to face, you know, due to his pissing off his mother or his brother. He was like, thanks, Diana. Like he didn't want no harm to come to you know, the GTG crew. I don't know what it is. He kind of reminds me of that guy, uh, Sandy. 
on the have and the have nots. Like he's part of the mob family, but he don't want to put in no work. He don't want to see nobody get scared and get killed. And when his family member shoots somebody, he about piss on himself. That's what he reminds me of. But anyway, maybe things have changed. But um, she had got pissed. So she had hit up her husband, Tejada, in jail, told him about the situation. He insists that, you know, send the lesser of the two evils down there, send his um send his son Drew down there to talk to Little Guap. Uh Little Guap, that boy was in there. I don't Okay, first of all, first of all, Monet is desperately trying to make money, trying to keep the money flowing, tr tr trying to keep the money running through the streets. We now can see what one of her problems is. Little Guap was up there snorting. The Prada. He was up there high as a kite and he was getting all mouthy with Drew. You know, man, he was up there feeling himself, feeling himself, full of himself. And after Drew told him, you know, my mom, she really don't want y'all on social media, he gonna go live anyway. And this time he put Drew <coughs> in the scene, in the shot. So Drew knocks the uh, phone out of his hand um drew had no idea that his brother was sent there for backup but that might have been a good thing because when he knocked that uh phone out of his hand him and little guap they faced off they both ratched, ratched for their guns they ratched around their backs for their guns but right when it was about to pop off that's when kane jumps in that's when kane comes in he shoots a couple of rounds off in the air you know scares everybody everybody starts running but what he said, what little Guap said about their mama, <laughs> that was wrong. <laughs> he said, what he say? He said the reason why your <clears throat> what he said, the reason why your mother is so interested in me, um, or the reason why your mother wants my, you know, peen is because she ain't had none in about a decade. Little do she you know she been getting a lot in the past decade. She getting it in prison on conjugal visits, and she's getting it from that cop. <laughs> but don't nobody else need to know that besides her immediate family, her sons and her daughters. And at first, I was wondering how they would feel knowing that she was messing around on their father with another cop. But then I realized on this episode that they are fully aware that she's messing around with that other cop now her husband tahada he might be you know helping her out with protection but this other cop is helping her out on protection too i think he's been keeping her sons you know from getting locked up at least this last episode we definitely saw that he kept them from getting locked up by interceding when they came out of that uh whatever that that place was where um Lil Watt was, that warehouse or studio, whatever it was. Um, when they came out of there, the cops saw them, heard the gunshots, start chasing them down, and then that's when her sidekick, um, that's when he, you know, came in and interceded and lied and said the guys ran the other way. So he spared them. He spared them. Um, hold on, let me read your comments. You said, <clears throat> hold on, let me see. You said, uh, you go, Tasha is playing that role. You say you're going to be like, Ed was right. And I might be. <laughs> I might be. You said Tommy is his right hand. So, you know, he thought he was official and ready to avenge his death. Goes to start a show. So he always going to remain mysterious and solid on how he. You know what? He might be. He might be still alive. I don't know. But um, I thought uh, Kanan was going to be in the show forever, too. Especially since he created the show. I didn't expect that to kill him off, but he's gone. But yeah, you never know. Ghost might still be around. He just might still be around. <clears throat> but um, as far as uh, Officer Ramirez, again, you know, he's sleeping with Monet. He helped her sons, it helped her sons to be able to escape. And Monet was right. And assuming that little guap, you know, being all flashy on social media, showing all their money, they done basically, you know, hit a lick. They done came across some money. They slanging now. They want to show all their jewelry off, all their money off. Woo, woo, woo. So she was right. You know, they would draw attention to the police, which they did. For this time, they managed to get away from the police. But 
Monet doesn't want to listen to her lover, Ramirez, and she insists on not lying low, not lying low and keep business as it's going. Claiming she can't right now. I wonder if it's the fact that Tahada, when he went to prison, I mean, he's been in there for some time. So I wonder if it's because of the fact that he owes some people. I mean, he did mention how he didn't want Monet to cut off Lil Watt because he said Lil Watt's father once took a bullet from him. So I'm wondering, does he owe more than just Lil Watt's father? Is that the reason why she can't even lie low? Not even for a minute for things to smooth over? Y'all let me know what y'all think. But anyway, she told him that she couldn't lay low right now. Now, when she went to visit her her husband in prison for their little conjugal visit and whatnot, he was quite upset because she didn't follow orders. He's still running stuff. He's trying to still run stuff outside of the prison as well. But Monet, she don't seem like the type of person that wants to be ran. She's trying to run her business, run the household, take care of her nephew, and, you know, be a goon and all this, all wrapped up in one, a mother, a wife, a, she got a sidekick on the side. <laughs> Monet is doing the most. <laughs> Monet is doing the most. But anyway, he also tells her that he wants her um to allow their daughter. Now, y'all let me know what y'all think about that. Um, Diana wants to go play ball. Now, I didn't know she played ball, but evidently she plays basketball and she thinks that she's just as good as Zeke when it comes to basketball, her cousin. But Monet doesn't want her to, uh, want Diana to play basketball. She doesn't want her to go to school. She wants her to be out and I, I can't figure this out. I can't figure this out because most crime bosses, when it comes to like the females, their daughters, you know, nieces they want them to sit sit in the back sit in the cut they want them to go to school get a regular job have babies you know all that kind of stuff you know get married they might involve their boyfriends or their husbands into the family business into the gang life the selling drugs murdering all that kind of stuff but i was surprised when monet told her you don't need to go to school you don't need to play ball. Ain't no money in that. You need to help your brothers uh, run the family business. I was quite surprised to hear that from Monet. But Tahada feels, uh, feels otherwise. He he agrees with Diana that she should go to school. But will Monet let her go to school? I don't know. Hey, the positive for sure. Hey, what's going on? I don't know if you watched the last episode of uh, Power, but if y'all have, let me know about, um, so talk to me about some of these scenes that we're discussing. Um, oh, yeah. Make sure you guys like and share the video and subscribe to the channel. But, yeah. So, I don't know if she'll eventually let Diana go to school or if she's going to have Diana out there in the streets. She talking about, you know, the CTG crew, you know them better than Drew, your brother. But I just can't see, I can't see Diana out there in the streets like that. I don't know. And I have a feeling that, um, I have a feeling that Tariq might have some involvement with that to keep her out of the streets. I don't know. It might have, to have something to do with that deal that he made with Monet. It might have something to do with that. Uh, Tariq and Monet that made a deal. He done found out basically how much uh, money that uh, Monet, well, not exactly the amount, but he knows that Monet is desperately in need of money. And he also knows that right now the GTD gang is not a good look. It's not a good look for them. And they're not really making a lot of money. And we see why, because Lil Watt, he's smoking up all the money. <laughs> Yes. You said you watched it. Okay. Well, let me know what you thought about the episode. A lot of people is not, they're saying the show is moving too slow. So y'all let me know if y'all feel like the show is moving too slow. If it's not giving you everything that you need. I admit in the beginning of this, in a, this review tonight that I thought that the first episode just jumped off. It just came and it hit us fast. It hit us hard. And it was really exciting. Um, these, Last two episodes, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but I think it's going to pick up. I really do think it's going to pick up, especially after Tariq and Monet made this deal. Now, Tariq, he managed to convince Monet 
that would be a wise decision for her to hook up with him. She provided him with product and she and he gets rid of it. All the money he makes on campus, he gave her that bag full of money that he made in like a few days. That's more than what what they've been making. The one dude at the beginning of the show, he gave them like how much? Forty dollars? <laughs> He was like, this all I can get you right now is $40. <laughs> and if Drew wouldn't have stepped in, I think Kane would have beat him to pieces. He would have beat him to pieces. But yeah, he was like, nobody's making money on their crew right now. <laughs> so yeah, I think it's a wise decision for her to switch lanes. But will this backfire? Do y'all think this is going to backfire on Tariq? Messing with Monet because again, that lady is ruthless. I thought Ghost and Tommy and them was ruthless. I don't know, y'all. Y'all let me know. You said, I don't think Tariq knows what he's getting this. That's how I feel. I don't think Tariq knows what he's getting himself into. He is thinking solely about getting a supplier. He doesn't really know who Lorenzo is. No, I don't think he knows. And see, he did a little bit of investigation when he was at the library. I don't know what all he found out because so far, it's only been three episodes. But it seemed like they jumped into certain scenes. And then we don't see the nothing else. Like when he jumped into the, when he was in the library looking it up, we ain't seen nothing since then. You know, in the first episode when he was looking up their family. But now Lorenzo Tejada, he's looking into Tariq. And he made a call to his mother. To Tasha, basically telling her, um, if your son going to be involved with us, he now works for us. And if you treasure his life, you will make sure that he never steps out of line. So again, I'm with you, the positive pusher. I don't know Tariq knows what he, you know, getting himself into. But then again, Tariq is kind of smart. Tariq is kind of smart, but not smart enough to pass that dang paper. Man, that made me so mad. When he was listening to his classmate, uh, Lauren, when she told him, okay, he thought he thought that his professor, you know, was going to fail him on his paper. So Lauren told him, well, you know what? Um, you ain't got to win all of them. Just just play this one out. Just get a Professor Simmons, you know, what he wants. Just say what he wants to hear so he can um, give you a good grade on that paper. So that's what Tariq did. He He put down basically... He agreed with everything Simmons was talking about, even though it was totally against his, you know, thoughts and his feelings and everything. And he got no credit for it at all. <laughs> he got no credit. He didn't get no A, B, C, D, E. He just got an NC. NC, no credit. And the reason why? His professor, um, not his professor, but Professor Reynolds, uh, Jabari, who we about to get on real good. We about to get on some Jabari. That whole, okay, hold on, hold on. Okay, let me back up. <laughs> Reynolds, he told him, he said, basically, you know what? This is the grade that you deserve because you did not give your thoughts, your opinions on how you really felt about, you know, the book. Because when Tariq was going at it with Simmons in class, he definitely was telling him how he thought of the values and how he thought of Socrates and how he thought of Socrates' speech and everything. Um, but when it came down to his paper, he just held all that in and told Professor Simmons what he wanted to hear. So that's why Reynolds gave him a no credit uh, and see you said do you see the correlation between Tariq and Braden it's like the remake of go yes oh my god yes now I have to admit though that I kind of thought and I'm still not sure I'm still not sure because okay I'm, I'm, I have to admit I'm side eyeing Lauren for one I'm side eyeing Lauren I wasn't too convinced about Braden Braden came through, though. He comes through, you know, gave Tariq a place to stay because Monet said if he joins the family, not join the family business, but if she supplies him with a product and he sells <clears throat> the product and everything, 
then he can no longer live with her nephew Zeke. And they have to be like, besides him tutoring him, helping him with his homework, she don't want Tyreek having no parts to Zeke. And it's crazy because she wants Zeke to go to college and play basketball. But her daughter, who just seems like she's not really made for the streets, she won't let go to school and play basketball. But anyhow, anyhow. So I'm kind of side-eyeing Lauren, though, because of the fact that she gave him that information. She told him to basically not put his true thoughts on that paper and just concede to Professor Simmons, which backfired in Tariq. And I'm like, was there more of a, um, a um, did she have some kind of intentions behind that? Did she have a different motive? I don't know. I'm side eyeing her. I don't. I don't really know about her too much, but I don't trust her. <laughs> Y'all, let me know. I could be reaching, but I don't trust her. Um, Braden, him and Braden could be the Tommy and Ghost. Um, but Braden, I'm I'm side eyeing him a little bit too. I, I really am. You said he didn't realize that Simmons was grading the paper. Yeah, that's right. He thought Simmons was grading the paper, and that's strange too, because I've been to college. And I've never had a class with a teacher or professor and they handed off the work to a totally different professor to grade. But maybe this is a special situation um, because of the fact that Tariq um, seems to have fell behind in the beginning. And he he was late for some meetings at first. Um, maybe they think that he's not all the way ready for the school. Like Simmons thinks that the class is too advanced for him. So maybe that's why he have two professors checking his work or critiquing him in the same class. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, Monet wants Zeke to make it to the NBA. But then she wants her daughter to be a drug dealer. I don't know. I, I don't know. It, do you think that she's trying to make her daughter to be her mini-me? And if she is, I still think that she should let her do her own thing, go to school, make a career out of herself, because I really don't think that she is fit for the streets. But who knows? <laughs> she would have a good teacher if she was, you know, if she did determine that she really ready for the streets. Her mother would probably get her ready in no time. But yeah, I think she should let her go to school. You said this is kind of co studies. It's more rigorous. The professor said he does grade pa papers. Yeah, I heard him say he grades papers afterwards. I just didn't, I don't remember him saying that beforehand. And if so, did Tariq know? Because he said he didn't even know that he was grading the papers. So I don't remember him saying it beforehand. I just remember him saying it afterhand that he grades the papers. But still, I don't know. It is it is a more rigorous class. <laughs> but as far as um from now on, I'm sure Tariq is going to do his best to be, like he said, authentic and defend his opinions, which Tariq has no problem doing. Again, he just figured he had to concede to Professor Simmons just to pass that paper, that um, assignment. But anyway, anyway, so as far as Zeke, though, as far as Zeke, right now, Tariq, he's failing some of his assignments. Um, Zeke still ain't playing. Zeke owes Tariq because Zeke has been doing nothing. All he does, he, and he ain't been playing playing basketball. He ain't been going to practices. It's not allowed for him to even go to the practices. But instead, he's sitting around playing video games, watching TV, just kicking it while Tariq is doing his homework, also tutoring him, writing up his papers, slanging, <laughs> slanging and hustling on the side and also, you know, trying to keep up with his own stuff, with all his own schoolwork, which he's falling behind in. So that's why he told Zeke that he owes him a favor, which was to hit up his Aunt Monet. So um, Tariq could try to, you know, he told him that he wants to date his uh, cousin, Diana, which I think Tariq still does. Do y'all think him and uh, Diana is going to start dating? 
I think so. They're taking a lot of interest in each other, but I think if they do it, it's going to be behind the scenes. They're going to have to sneak because Monet is not going to be having that. She don't want him. She really didn't want him around the family. She don't want him around Zeke if he's not tutoring him, and she doesn't want him around their family, period, because she said everybody he comes into contact with either ends up in jail or dead, but uh, it seems like everybody who comes in contact with Monet ends up in jail or dead. <laughs> so it seems like they have that in common. <laughs> let me read your comments. You said, I don't think Lauren is setting him up, though. Okay, hold on. Let me go back. Let me go back. Okay, you said, yes, she wants her to be her mini-me and not better than her money. Mm, you're right. Um, I don't think Lauren is setting him up, though. You know, at first I thought him and Lauren was going to hit it off. But then when he met Diana, I was like, oh, okay. They, I thought they would have been a hit it off by now, but mm -hmm. you say, yes, I think so. I saw a trailer episode four. You think so? What? Hold on, hold on. What I miss? Tariq definitely has some leverage to use. Zeke has collateral when it comes to Lorenzo. No. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I just hope Tariq is making a wise decision. That's what I hope. I know he really wants to. Um, pay off McLean. He only gave him fifty thousand dollars. He still owe four hundred and fifty thousand dollars. But I think he will make that pretty quickly working with uh Monet because you saw how fast he turns that money. He turned them the drugs over them pills over like ASAP. And the other goons, the thugs, the dealers, whatever you want to call them, what's the C T G G T G gang, uh Lil Wap and them. Uh, they ain't they spending all their money, they buying jewelry, clothes, cars, they smoking, they snorting it up. So, again, do y'all think Tyreek might have set himself up? Because, how happy is Lil Wapping them gonna be find out? Because, I think what's gonna happen is Monet is gonna basically boot Lil Wapping them to the side, even though her husband to hit to hide, told her not to. But I think she's going to see Tariq bringing in so much money, she's going to be like, we don't need them CTG boys. We don't need Little Wap and them because Tariq is bringing in more money than they are. But then, you know how people are. They be hating when they get released from a job. <laughs> so I can definitely see Little Wap and them getting upset with Tariq. So I don't know, Reek. You better watch your bad boy. <laughs> he had watch his back. But hold on, hold on, y'all. Hold on. You said they are reckless that he and Diana is going to get together. Hold on. What? Hold on. You said, yes, I think. Oh, 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 okay, okay. Okay. Girl, I thought she was talking. I don't know what I was reading. <laughs> I thought it said that Monet, him and Monet was going to get together. I was like, hold on now, positive pusher. <laughs> Oh, she robbing the cradle. I was like, hold up now, but I read it wrong. <laughs> but what do y'all think about Carrie, Professor Milgram, and Jabari? Jabari. You know, I don't too often hear Jabari, that name, in a TV show. Um, but I heard it in this show. And um, I also heard it in, uh, what's that other show that I was reviewing? Uh, um, oh, dang. Now I can't think of it. Jabari, Jabari, Jabari. Uh, oh, God. Now I can't remember. My bad. My bad. I can't remember. But anywho, um, <clears throat> Jabari. I like that name. I really do. I like that name. But uh, Jabari, tell me how y'all feel about Jabari and Carrie. Um, Jabari's a ho. How you sleeping with your students at the school? Like, at the school, and then the fact that his office is darn near connected to his ex's office to carry Professor Milgram's office. And he's up there. Now, when she first came on to him, I don't know if she's trying to get good grades. I don't know if she's trying to set him up to get blackmailed. I don't know what her intentions are or if she really likes him because she came on really strong and he ain't that cute. 
He is not that cute. You said, uh, who child cares a sex addict? Isn't that why she was going to therapy? You know, I've been wondering about that, and you might be right because last episode, when I did my review last episode, I said, Is she going to therapy or does she have a sponsor for drugs, for smoking, for drinking, addicted to sex? I did mention that last week. I said, Is she addicted to sex? I didn't know what it was. I don't know what it was. And then how the, uh, her counselor um, kept her sponsor kept telling her, stay away from him. Don't go near him. If he called, don't answer. The only time y'all, you know, have anything to do with each other is if it's work, if it corresponds to work, if it relates to work. Other than that, stay far away from him. So you might be right. I, she might be a sex addict. I child. Child, you said, hey, baby girl, 82. You said, Jabari, a pretty hoe. <laughs> yes, Jabari is a pretty hoe. He a pretty hoe, all right. He was up in there knocking it out the box. He was knocking pictures, all his awards, all his accolades, all his degrees. He was knocking them all off the wall. Oh, for Carrie's walls, too. I can't believe that she just got up and left. Because me, <laughs> I ain't even gonna lie. I would have got my, okay, first of all, I would have got my cell phone. I would have cracked the door a little bit. I would have stood there and I would have, I would have filmed it all. I would have filmed it all. And then used it at my advantage. But the thing that kicked her was, he kept hitting her up. He kept calling her, leaving her messages. I haven't heard from you. I'm trying to reach you. How are you? I'm thinking about you. You know, all this whoop de woo 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 And then he up there next office over just slaying it. Got her all over the desk. Probably the same desk that he had carry on. Ain't that something? I'm like, ugh. Mm -mm -mm. Child, I thought Carrie was going to bust up in there, too. I was like, you mean to tell me you just going to walk out, grab your laptop, your purse, and your keys, and just leave? <laughs> I just knew. I just knew she was going to bust up in there. I just knew it. At least to take pictures or record. Maybe not to stop the action, but at least to get some footage of action. But then again, how's it push her? If she is a sex addict, and if that is the reason why she's seeing a sponsor and why she was basically um told to do not go near him, don't have nothing to do with him, stay far away. Maybe that's why she had to hurry up and leave because if she is a sex addict, that probably was turning her on. And she probably would have walked in there and tried to have a threesome, huh? <laughs> oh, you said <laughs> you said he didn't know Carrie was there. I think if he knew Carrie was in her office, he wouldn't have. No, he wouldn't have done it. No, he didn't know she was there. He didn't know she was there. I just thought it was pretty bold for him to do it with her office right there. He also didn't know if she went home for the day. He didn't have no clue. He, and then the fact that he first he wasn't even going to do it. He basically told her, girl, girl, bye, Felicia. That's what he basically told her. And then he going to put his hands on the door and slam the door shut when she opened the door. He was like, I ain't letting this young tenderoni grad student walk out of here without tearing that up. But why not go home? Shoot, why not go home? <laughs> So, yeah, I think he messed up big time. I think he messed up big time. And if he has any um, ideas of getting back with Carrie, if she was even considering it, I don't know, y'all. They didn't show us where she went. That's true. They did show us where it went. I just assumed she left. But you're right. They didn't show us where she went. He, shoot, she could. And you know what? You know what? She could have walked out the door. And then came back. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
We don't know. You said you see, oh, you think he heard? Oh, baby girl. You think he heard her? You know what? I'm gonna have to rewatch that scene. I'm gonna have to rewatch that scene. Because if I'm correct, if you're correct, um, I think I might have missed that. But I do remember her coming into the room. I remember her sitting her stuff down on the table, on her desk. Um, I think I remember her door, the sound of her door shutting. I pay attention to a lot of stuff. But I, I might have missed if he if there if she made enough noise for him to notice. Because if he did know she was in there, and if he does know that she might be a sex addict, he might have kept it going to try to get her in there. Who knows? They could have had three sons before. Because people who are sex addicts, they like a lot of different things, child. They like to venture over on the wild side. Mm -hmm. You think she would? She, you probably right, too. You probably right. He said, I think that's why he changed his mind about having relations. And, and you know, that's why That's why I said I think I need to watch that again, because I think you might be right. He might have heard her in there, because it was so crazy how soon as she walked in, at first he was going to let her leave. But it's like as soon as Carrie sat down, and after she noticed the noises several times, I'm like, I don't know. He was making so much noise. So that's why I'm under the impression that he might was doing that on purpose. I'm telling you, if Carrie is a sex addict and if that's why she's seeing a sponsor, he probably was trying to invite her into the room. But I don't know, y'all. I don't know. But anyway, I'm about to get ready to turn myself in, not into jail or nothing, but into the bed. <laughs> Oh, I'm tired. It's been a long day. It's been a long day. I've been up since 6.30. I worked like 11 and a half hours. And then I had to write up my little blog. I've been writing a lot of blogs lately, y'all. There's been a lot of stuff going on, child. Especially here locally in Omaha, Nebraska. <clears throat> um, if you want, you can check out my previous videos. It went down the other day in our city. Um, with some alleged racist committing suicide after he was indicted for killing this 22-year-old black boy. Um, he committed suicide days after he was indicted and was supposed to turn himself in. So the city has been at an unrest for a long time, but got some kind of positivity out of knowing that the grand jury that um, they pressured the city to get to re-investigate um, the case um, came back with a guilty charges, manslaughter, and like three other charges. Um, and then for the man to kill himself instead of facing trial. So it's a lot of stuff going on here. But anyway... So make sure you check out my website, thehoodtable.com. Again, if you're interested in any The Hood Table merchandise from T-shirts to leggings, coffee cups, uh, face masks, um, pillows. We got all kind of stuff over there with The Hood Table logo on it. Um, and also sign up for our monthly newsletters. I send out a loop newsletter once a month at the first of the month to everybody who signed up for our newsletters. Um, also, if you're interested in becoming a part of the Hood Table Nation, all you got to do is click the join button, which is right next to the um, subscribe button. That's if you're interested in becoming a part of the Hood Nation. If you um if you want to be a member, yeah, Positive Pusher, it's a lot. Check out my thehoodtable.com website. Um, I do blogs on certain things that's going on in the hood and my hood, because y'all know I'm born and raised in the hood, still live in the hood. Uh, so I uh, blog about certain things that's going on in our hood and outside of our hood too, trending news, celebrities, things like that. But yeah, it's it's really heated where I am right now. And it's a lot of black and white going on right now because 
that man basically was proven to be a racist after jury investigate the grand jury investigation. So, but anyway, anyway, I don't want to get all into that <laughs> after the power review. But yeah, so make sure you follow us on Facebook, IG, Twitter, and thehoodtable.com. And like and share the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. And in the meantime and in between time, stay safe, be blessed, and I'm out. Deuces.